Welcome. So today I would like to talk about history of periodontal disease. I think that many dentists look for the last 50 years, but I think we have to look uh, at a lot more longer time. So if I can begin this history, it goes from, I would say from 1678 to 2022 this would be my opinion so what i want to uh, talk also is about periodontal health so i think we can stop the infection and we can cure this disease so this is why i want to make a revision of this uh, history of the periodontal disease now, I would start with uh, Lewin Hook with the microscope. Microscope was something very important in medical field. And um, sadly, dentists and periodontists have forgotten the microscope in periodontal disease. So I think it is, uh, it is a big mistake. So if we come back, um, the first thing we would look at would be a growth discovery about parasite um, in um, oral disease. So he called it uh, oral endamoebiasis, endamoeba gingivalis infection with this parasite. So at the, at the time in 1914, uh, there was some kind of proof uh, seeing those parasites uh, seeing a pathogenic importance of this parasite Antamoeba gingivalis, this amoeba, we find in most uh, separating pocket of pyre. So, and they used to, uh, dentists at the time used to say there was prompt, uh, after prompt removal of uh, the amoeba, uh, it stopped separation. So, I think it is important part of the history we have to say. Um, so this amoeba, Antemoeba gingivalis, which is present in most periodontal disease, was discovered in 1849. And it was the first one ever discovered, the first amoeba discovered. And curiously, uh, dentists are the first to... Um, forget about this uh, parasite. So it's very surprising. And if we go back to 1897, we find this uh, elementary biology uh, from uh, Thomas Jeffrey Parker. So this is first book of biology. And uh, first chapter is about amoeba, about parasite. So Elementary biology has first chapter on protozoan parasite amoeba, about 15 pages. So it is more important at the time than uh, bacteria. It's, it was also before penicillin, penicillium bacteria. So amoeba was important part of the history. And uh, what we can see in this elementary biology chapter is the amoeba is animalcule. It's microscopic animalcule. And we know how it behaves, how it can move and, you know, go everywhere. And from that time, we had uh, this um, doctor and uh, journal of uh, American Dental Association in uh, 1914, there was, at the time, there was um, seminars about Antamoeba gingivalis with, from uh, Kofuid and Sweezy. So at the time, uh, they afflicted, they say that patient afflicted with the pyre alveolaris, there was an easy cure removing the amoeba. So this is part of the history. It is still important part of it. So then after in 1929, uh, we see a cofoid meta-analysis showing that everybody see the amoeba, most of the time 100% of patients had parasite amoeba in the pyre and they can find the amoeba at the bottom of the 
pocket, the disease pocket, and they show there is a definite correlation between protozoa of the mouth and the inflammatory disease pyre alveolaris or what we call today periodontitis. So 100% correlation means, um, means we have to pay attention and we have to look for what is this correlation. The science has to study why it is present, not saying it's only a correlation. We have to look for why is this correlation. And this we will see how there can be such a relation. Then uh, come um, the time in 1973 uh, where we speak about infested oral protozoan in the mouth. So this is from um, Pasteur Institute, La Pierre and Rousset, uh, used to say that in France, for example, 45% of French people have protozo those protozoan in their mouth, uh, and they think uh, those protozoan are part of the disease, of the periodontal disease. So this is not new, and this is known from Institut Pasteur in 1973. So we cannot forget those. So those uh, researchers at the time say um, the way it has to be considered a uh, irritating factor in the periodontal disease, and they think the way you can attract this parasite would be a kissing. They call it occidental uh, mode of kissing would be the, the main uh, source of contamination. And they think they have, uh, we have to modify our sexual habits to uh, make sure we don't have this uh, parasite in the mouth. And they, re they um, relate at that time the family toothbrush was in pro probably a, a mode of infection. Uh, kissing, um, French kiss would be a problem. And they're saying if the, the mouth is not in gingivitis, then probably you cannot get this uh, parasite. The same thing COVID was saying in 1929. So this is part of the history of the, um, of the disease. And La Pierre and Rousset conclude at the time uh, this medication, antiparasitic medication, which is metronidazole or flagyl, uh, using this uh, medication would prove some uh, pathogenicity of the parasite. So it's still part of the um, disease. Okay, so what I want to address is treating the disease uh, most of the time, dentists are using scaling and root planning, SRP. But SRP, when I look at uh, science, uh, SRP in uh, dentist uh, offices only reduce pocket uh, 5 to 19%, which is not much. So pocket closer, 5%, up to 9%. 19% is not much. And when we can see from studies, uh, we find the same microbes before and after scaling and root planning. So this doesn't look very good. And we, what we can see from the study with root planning is uh, after there's still 50% bleeding. So this is not this is not look, does not look very good. If you still have a half disease, half bleeding, so it's not cured. And of course, you need to have maintenance and maintenance for a lifetime. So, what we want to talk is our hysteric antiparasitic treatment method. So we call it Bonner method because patient knows about it. And we've been teaching this for more than 25 years. So we have a protocol for curing the disease, mostly based on 
removing the um, periodontal parasite. So it's a different vision, it's specific analysis, but we have to look at this uh, periodontal microbiota. So we look at parasite and of course we also look at uh, bacteria of red and orange complex. So we take care of all those with the microscope. So we'll see a little bit what are the steps toward this uh, curing process and at the end of this presentation you probably understand how we cure the disease relatively with any patient who want to participate and want to be cured. Uh, when I go back into history, uh, important um, year was uh, 1981, I would say, with Paul Kais. So many doctors, many periodontists know Paul Kais, and Paul Kais had a um, presentation in Buffalo Symposium in 1981 where he correctly describe uh, on the microscope, face contrast microscope, what we can see in health, uh, what is gingivitis and what is periodontitis. And at the time he was very clear about it. So health was like little bacteria, cocci and filament not moving and normally no white cell. And when you have gingivitis, you have those same cells, but you have to add a lot of uh, motile cells, motile bacteria, spirochetes, vibrios, and bacilli, and a lot more uh, white cell coming in. So this would be gingivitis. And he described periodontitis as same as gingivitis, but then you add many parasites, antemoeba gingivalis, and a lot of white cells, it's like pus and within the gum and sometimes you may have trichomonas tenax, probably tenax, trichomonas which render the disease a little more aggressive what we think today again. So he made this study and presented this study where it is really clear about this presence of motile bacteria of course pus, of course, and amoeba. So amoeba is completely absent of those patients. Uh, gingivitis, there is no amoeba again. And destructive periodontitis, uh, all patients have the amoeba present. So again and again, we have this definitive correlation. So still it is surprising dentists uh, are not seeing this um, this today or have forgotten about this. So, so uh, we look at parasite, we still look at uh, bacteria. So F.G. Sokransky, 1998, talking about red complex. Yes, of course, we look at red complex on the microscope. We can see those uh, bacteroides and treponem Porphyromonas, we have to do PCR study. But when we look at this red complex, it's like it's not clear. As in health, you may find 10%, 4%, 12%, older patient, 12, 5, 10% patient, periodontitis would be 40%, 23%, 30%. While for the parasite, we have none in health and parasite we have 100% in periodontal disease. So bacterial red complex has no real contrast for the clinician. It's very difficult. It is a lot more easy to look at those parasites. So now we can say periodontal disease is rapidly detectable with a microscope and easily avoidable if we can do early analysis of the biofilm of the microbiota and using this microscope as a tool we can make sure it is inflammation is gone and by uh, dysbiosis is gone too so it is clearly curable uh, when we study this with the microscope so uh, I used to see doctors doing this Root planning and uh, 
When I look at the studies here from um, PEDO test, they showed normal root planning would have like 18% uh, pocket closer, which is not much. And uh, when you give antibiotic uh, using those PCR recommendations from the laboratory, probably you may have up to 50% pocket closure. But uh, our technique we teach for um, more than 25 years clearly show at least in 2003, at least show healing of 94% uh, pocket closure and uh, bleeding stops the same way. So I think we can use this microscope and we can use this target Antimoeba gingivalis to cure the disease. So it becomes very easy when we look at this uh, target. So I show you a little bit of case like this patient with catastrophic hygiene, gum is inflamed, a lot of calculus, and halitose is important. So, and when we treat this patient, we do the diagnose with the microscope. So early before treatment, we see the amoeba are very easily uh, detectable on the face contrast microscope. We can see the parasite feeding on the white cell. We can see the ghost cell remnant of PMNs. And then after a few weeks and few months, we see the pardon me, difference. You see the little uh, cocaine filament, normal biofilm coming in. And then after some time, removing calculus at that time. And then we uh, see after some time, we can have complete healing. So numbers are very good. No more bleeding. Uh, this case was 93% pocket closer, was closed. And if we look at other case like this one, number 28, we see this uh, bleeding everywhere, pocket uh, five, six millimeters. And we see after treatment, no more bleeding. This one is 100% pocket, 100 pocket closure. So everywhere around 95% pocket closure would be a good number close to what we can call a cure. So later we made a book for patients because patients are not informed they have parasite in their mouth, they have parasite in periodontal disease. Patients, they do not know. Most dentists don't know either, even periodontists, most of them I've seen, they don't know about those parasites, this 100% correlation with the disease. So I made this book, uh, in French was Tant de bouche à guérir, but in English, to kiss or not to kiss, a cure for gum disease. So if patients want to learn about this infection, this periodontal infection with parasite, they can see there's a book, they can understand what happened and see why they, they have this parasite and why most dentists will not tell uh, them about this uh, infection. So uh, we made this antiparasitic treatment. So I did not invent it, but uh, I was, the story was in 1990, I was not really satisfied with uh, conventional root planning and uh, there was still a uh, pocket and bleeding, patients were not cured. So I met this Ontario, Ontario uh, Canadian dentist, Trevor Lyons, and um, he had a very, very good book called Introduction to Protozoa and Fungi in Periodontal Infections. And he explained how he cured a patient, eliminating the protozoan, and it was followed almost automatically by arrest of the disease and its resolution, including bone regrowth. So I learned from Dr. Trevor Lyons, and I applied his technique for years and years, and I never stopped from that time. So it really changed my practice, and patients are happy to be cured. So we made this, uh, this treatment and we uh, made um, some version of a periodontal treatment that would work uh, all the time with all patients. 
So results were so good that uh, we made a um, video film with Radio Canada was called Découverte, where we state that we find those amoeba most of the time in periodontal active disease, and those amoeba are pathogen. Why? Because they feed on red cell and they feed on white cell nucleus. So this has to be uh, considered a pathogen. So we make some study with uh, in France with six more than 600 patients with uh, five dentists, five dental clinic, and all have the same result, about 95% pocket closure and 95% dispersion of, uh, of bleeding. So it is evident we can uh, copy and paste this technique, it would work. So we call it anti-parasitic treatment. And then some ask, we, some ask, we do more. So we had this review in Parasite Journal explaining effectively with PCR and genetic, really it is Antamoeba gingivalis, which is confirmed. It was confirmed in 86% of patients and absent in health. So still uh, new genetic microbiome studies uh, reveal about the same thing as microscope, but to our opinion, microscope is more accurate than uh, genetic studies, but still it was Antamoeba gingivalis all that time. And then we had um, some writing in Frontier Journal saying we have as dentists, we have as periodontists, we have to rethink reassess the role of antamoeba gingivalis during periodontitis because it's like a key microbe in the disease 100 almost percent correlation on microscope maybe 86 percent correlation on uh, genetic new studies but still it is present and then we saw that uh, some researchers in China and uh, Deutschland uh, did some kind of study with the amoeba, cultivating the amoeba Antamoeba gingivalis, and they showed that amoeba Antamoeba gingivalis is a pathogen, destroy periodontal tissue and infiltrate epithelium. So it has to be considered a pathogen. So. Uh, today we have this precise protocol that would uh, cover any stage of the periodontal disease, stage 1 to stage 4. And this treatment, this treatment is with no surgery, so mostly no pain uh, for the patient. It just takes a little more time, mostly about one year to do the complete uh, treatment. So what is periodontal disease? Periodontitis, we have to see it at, as its definition. Its definition is, in most studies we've seen, is microbial dysbiosis and inflammatory process. So what we say is, treat this definition. Remove microbial dysbiosis and remove inflammatory process. And this is very easy to do with the microscope. Looking at the bacteria, it's some kind of bacterial paradigm. There are some uh, in health, there are some good bacteria in health, some good bacteria in disease, and some bad bacteria in health, some in periodontitis. So, Bacterial paradigm is not clear for the dentist. But if you look at the microscope, what we can see in most poster presentation we have made and the literature we have written, uh, we have written in Quebec, we have written in France, and we can see difference in healthy uh, biofilm very easily with the microscope. Uh, gingivitis is exactly how, what um, Polka is used to describe it. So we have those motile bacteria and white cell. And when we come to the periodontal disease, clearly we see the same as gingivitis, but you have to add um, 
most of those parasites, uh, antimoibogenic valis and sometimes trichomonas tenax. So, what does this parasite amoeba, antimoeba gingivalis, does? You see the film here. You see how it can eat. It's sucking the nucleus of the white cell. So it nourishes. See here, there are already two uh, nucleus uh, inside the parasite, and he's getting a third one from the the PMN uh, during the disease. So the amoeba is a parasite and it's nourishing for nu from nucleus of white cell. So your white cell cannot defend itself. So it has pseudopod, it has a phagocytic vesicle because it eats a red cell and white cell nucleus. So it's unique um, nucleus, make it clear what we see as the parasite. It's not epithelial cell, it's not macrophage. Clearly with the, the um, highly, high quality microscope, we can confirm it is the parasite and this parasite is uh, nourishing from a uh, live cell, not dead cell. It lives on white, on uh, uh, a live cell only. So we can diagnose with this microscope and we can treat removing this uh, periodontal microbiota. When we look at health, health is very different. It's cochlear bacteria, like we see here on the film, you see obioses. So obioses, little dots and lines, cocci and filament, and epithelial cells, no white cells. So this is common cell biofilm. So really it is easy to confirm health and confirm cure with the microscope. If you look at gingivitis, gingivitis will see those motile bacteria, mostly most of them would be spirochetes, sometimes vibrios, but some motile bacteria and white cell again because there is inflammation. So you can see those white cell PMNs and you'll see mostly those spirochetes moving everywhere within the, the circus. So, and then if you look for periodontal disease, you'll see those amoebas. So here we are at um, 100 magnification, low magnification. You can see those little circles, there's about 10 or 20 little circles within, within each field. Here about uh, 20, 30 uh, little circles which are parasites. Those are amoeba. On the top right you can see those filaments. This will be the uh, calculus that will be that will form underneath the gum. So we know this ecosystem how it's coming in. So we have those filaments, you have those parasites under it, and it's absolutely clear on the microscope. So see here we have plenty of white cell. We have this parasite going all the way like this. Still, again, spirochetes, vibrio, and some uh, bacilli um, remaining of uh, Fusobacterium species. So, white cell, uh, motile bacteria, and then we have those amoeba going around like animalcule, like uh, lar some kind of larvae uh, going around th within the sulcus. So, this is periodontal disease. Now, with the, help, with the help of the microscope, we can uh, look at low power and then go to high power to confirm the presence of those parasites. So, see on the low power, there might be like 30 or 40 amoeba within one millimeter, square, one square millimeter of, uh, of the plaque, of the deep bottom plaque and it is very easy to detect. And when you detect the, those parasites, then you just go high power to confirm the presence of the amoeba with its typical uh, round nucleus and karyosome and chromatin around the nucleus. So there is some kind of uh, sequential, sequential model with this parasitic infection. So health, we all know, aerobic environment, no mortal bacteria, then gingivitis, you get gingivitis. Now, gingivitis must be considered 
the portal of entry. This is how you get the disease. To have periodontitis, you have to have gingivitis first. And from this gingivitis, you have red cell and white cell. Then you can contract those parasites. They get within the gingivitis tissue, the disease tissue of the gingivitis. And now they can feed on the white cell and red cell and release uh, enzyme that would that would break the tissue. So it is easily understandable how we can uh, see this. Now we've made in 2018 some um, caricature of what we see on the microscope. So on microscope we can see the red part of it, part of the red complex, part of the orange complex, part of the yellow complex and green complex as well. So we can understand how this is organized, this co-aggregation with the uh, filament brush patterns, parakeet pumps, everything. We can see the neutrophil, ghost cell, we can see the macrophage differentiate from parasite and sometimes we can see those three comonas in aggressive case. So it is very easy to see on the microscope. Now if you want to get cured, cured is remove everything. Remove red complex, remove orange complex, remove parasite, either amoeba or trichomonas, remove all the white cells, remove inflammatory cell, and then you go back to green complex only, cocaine filament. No white cell, only dots and line, cocaine filament and white cell. So doing this is like a tautology, you, are, you can you'll be sure your patient is cured uh, if you only have this green complex. Even no calculus is present if there's no white cell. So what is the journey? How can we uh, do this periodontal cure for most patients? Uh, treatment, we call it our method, Bonner method. Treatment would be targeting three things. First, eliminate those pathogen microbes, either bacteria or parasite, eliminate those microbes, eliminate this infection. Uh, helping patient to, to this disinfection and hygiene process, it's real training. So we do this training, training the patient every month, every appointment, and educating the patient how he get this pathogen within his mouth. So look at the environment where it can get those parasites. Could be water, could be pets, could be a, a family thing. So it's been shown genetic is not a part of the disease in 2021. So uh, we mostly forget about genetic. It's mostly family and infection. So target would be no more pocket, no more bleeding, healthy microbiota and autonomy of the patient on his uh, daily hygiene. So if you get all those four, uh, it's going to work. So the antiparasitic treatment mostly, uh, the one we've, um, we've written in the French journal in 2013, uh, we explain a little bit the steps, how we heal patient, how we cure the patient. So first step would be disinfection, remove the bugs, uh, remove the inflammation. When this is done, mostly for a month, usually, you can remove the calculus and it, it's going to be real easy. No sharp current, only vibrating tools. And then when it's, this is done, third step is let heal. So it takes three, four months, many times, so the bone grows back again, mostly in vertical defects. So we need time. So three to four months cicatrization time and then watch, make sure for the patient not getting gingivitis again. And if he doesn't get gingivitis again, as he is cured at that time, so not having gingivitis again, make sure he doesn't get periodontal disease again. So a second parasite we want to address is this trichomonas. So in 2015, uh, this was the study Ribeiro Cantos in Benchimal in Brazil saying uh, cultivating this trichomonas 
And we see this trichomonas is present in 30% of periodontal disease and mostly aggressive one. So they show that this parasite send a projection, so trichomonas send projection and phagocytize the human cells in culture and it was as pathogen as vaginalis. So trichomonas then acts same degree of pathogenicity as uh, trichomonas vaginalis. So the doctors treat the vaginalis, so dentists should treat and acts the same way. So it's no good for you. It's, uh, it's impossible. So how do we use this microscope would be simply to uh, get a little uh, bit of plaque where you have the disease. Not take the, do not take the plaque where tissue is healthy. Take the plaque at the bottom of the pocket of a disease pocket. Always use sublingual uh, saliva to spread two or three uh, specimen of this um, of this uh, biofilm and then you go out, you go investigate at 100 x 100 uh, time magnification and then complete your diagnostic at high power with the immersion oil so uh, you have this is easily uh, you can learn this it's fairly easy uh, but it takes some time to learn this this technique but what we see if young dentists newly graduating from our uh, school, International Institute of Periodontology, they know after um, five days training, most of them, they can use this technique and have the same result as we have. So I have this young dentist here, first year, and his median success on 20 patients for the first year, 20 patients treated with our technique, he was exactly 95% pocket closure. So this is really good new doctor using this new technique. And we have uh, this spreadsheet of patients seeing what are the pockets before, what are the pockets after, and we write how much closure pocket of closure pocket for all the patients. So median success is 95%. So really it is great in the first year. So you can do this technique, but one thing is you have to have this microscope and look at least at parasites. So what we like this um, microscope, Leica DM75, uh, 750. So this like uh, integrated the camera within the microscope. So it's fairly easy, easy to adjust and you have this low power and high power. So if you want to buy and start uh, doing it, just use um, patient saliva for mounting because if you use water or saline you're going to destroy the parasite and then you you don't see them anymore so it's it's a big mistake from from science for 100 years do not use water or sal or um, saline always use patient saliva for mounting so you keep the parasite alive and you can find them um, also, we normally use normal charting procedure, pocket uh, uh, numbers. We use all those normal, um, otherwise normal um, examination with the patient. Again, with uh, 2018 was nice with uh, this study of Catherine Bisson uh, saying, uh, um, looking at, at genes and microbes, she finds uh, trichomonas in the disease, in trichomonas with severe bone loss, periodontal disease, but none in healthy uh, teeth. So uh, exactly the same thing as entemweba, trichomonas is only present in the disease. And I'll show you this little movie of uh, one of dentists in uh, France using our technique and microscope. So see how those parasites, you have some amoeba, a couple of amoeba, and you have three, four, seven, three commonals present. So see how it is um, incredible to see those things. So what I say, what says our common sense? 
Uh, how is it possible to leave this in patient mouth? How is it possible we do SRP and not removing those parasites? So I, I really think leaving those parasites really appears as idiocy. I mean, how can we leave this in the mouth of patient and say, hey, brush your teeth? No, come on, we have to do a lot better than this. So the model is clear, you're healthy, or for many reasons, plaque microbe, trauma, local factor, you have this gingivitis. This gingivitis is the portal of entry, and then you have those parasites, uh, antimoeba and trichomonas, and we have to stop this uh, infection. So we have um, written this uh, treatment protocol in a, some kind of a clear way. So we have this little uh, picture, see how we cure the patient, how we treat the patient. So mostly it's a 10 appointment. We have four appointment removing the infection. We want to make sure there's no more of those microbes. And then from then we have uh, removing of the calculus, subgingival calculus, but no sharp curettes because we want to keep the cement. We call it lithotricia. So just remove calculus with sonic or ultrasonic uh, apparatus, but no, uh, no curettes because semen is gone and it's no good for reattachment. And also we use this uh, technique with hydrogen peroxide, 1%, Torrens powder, we'll explain, and sometimes we use metronidazole cream or systemic if needed. So we want to make sure patient doesn't have any more those bacteria and parasites then remove calculus, then let heal, then take, do a second examination at one year to make sure it is a cure at that time after one year treatment. So during this healing, if you look at the vertical bone loss, you see a 10 millimeter pocket will easily go back to 3.5 and 3 millimeters almost within uh, 12 months. So bone will just regrow in this pocket. No need for other material, no need for a special bone or whatever. No pain, no nothing. Bone will rebuild by itself knowing this is within normal biofilm area. Okay, so patient has to get rid of the infection so the bone just goes back into the, the circus. So this method we teach, really we can prevent, uh, we can regenerate, we can resolve inflammation, and most patients, they do not relapse. Why? Because they are completely cured, no pocket, no bleeding, and then if they don't get gingivitis, which is fairly easy with the training they have, they don't get the disease again. So this new method, in fact, it's not really new. It was known from Trevor Lyons years, which was uh, 1980. So this is very important. We talk about this technique. So goal really is no more pocket, no more bleeding, normal biofilm, normal microbiota, and autonomous patient. If you have all those, make sure you can cure this uh, disease. So disinfection, first part, we use this um, hydrogen peroxide patient use with his toothbrush. So hydrogen peroxide, 1%, uh, it will use it during eight months and then it can go back to toothpaste after. Also, you can add the Torrance powder, which is six bicarbonate, with one salt and patient applies it on the gum line. So it kills parasite. Why we do this? Because we know from elementary biology 120 years ago how to kill parasite. Just adding salt on, on them on a rapid time, rapid matter, and it kills the parasite. So this is what we use and this is what we see on the microscope. And what we see for me, most or many, many patients, last year were our uh, pocket closure 
for 15 patients was uh, 97 percent pocket closure so uh, at least if you can go from 95 to 100 percent you'll be clear so we have a patient here like this patient, we have 99% um, pocket closure and bleeding, so we can see uh, 17 years after treatment, see the, the bone, the implants uh, were, gone, uh, were done at the time uh, the infection was uh, resolved. We do the implant and it, it goes fairly well because there's no more infection. I remember this patient used uh, uh, hydrogen dioxide and baking soda and salt every um, every day. So today uh, we come to this uh, periodontal paradigm. So what I would hear in many congress, dental congress, would be 2018 is a nice year, new diagnostic, uh, new tools, and uh, but. If we look at new 2018 uh, decisional tree, most of the time it's just doing the same thing as before. Before we used to do root planning, reevaluate at six weeks. If bleeding or pocket uh, higher than five millimeter, we do surgery. So results are not you know, the results are variable. We don't know if it's going to cure or not. Some recession, some pain, some relapse. 2018 was like, wow, this great year because we look at risk factor, age, severity, smoking, diabetes, vacation, bone elation, calculus, uh, genetic predisposition, whatever. Anyway, uh, even after this marvelous decisional tree it finishes most of the time with root planning scaling and root planning again if it doesn't work we do it again and if it doesn't work we do the surgery so i think it's not clear uh, really uncertain and we have to do the maintenance so what i would recommend would be our technique which is simple and what we do is we bring back normal biofilm for all patients with the microscope. Bring back normal herbioses for all patients. No surgery, no pain. Results are predictable. 95 to 100% pocket closure and stop bleeding. 95% at least. Bone reconstruction and vertical defect real healing and patient autonomy. Even we can prevent those little cases having four millimeter pocket, we can look in the microscope, see the parasite and then stop the disease in one month. So we can do a lot of prevention with those young adult patient or even child patients. So it's very easy. Now, if we go back in time, I like this uh, study of Dr. Catherine Bisson again, 2019, where she shows before and after uh, scaling and root planning. So what we can see here is we almost have the same number of um, bad bacteria, pathogen bacteria and pathogen parasite right after root planning. So Vibrios, parakeets, bacilli, amoeba, protozoa, and trichomonas are still present if you only do root planning. Of course, root planning, scaling and root planning is just working with a shovel, removing the little uh, mouse while you have elephant parasite in the living room. So SRP is not enough, it's not good and it's not the way to go really it is not what we have to think is would be answering to dr van dyke thing he would say like step in resolution of inflammation or cessation of leukocyte inflammation filtration return to normal remove pmns you see remove macrophage this is what we do on the microscope. We have the tool now 
to remove all this inflammation. We have the tool to remove this infection. He said, Dr. Van Dyke would say, tissue destruction result from a combination of sub sustained microbial challenge and failure of endogen resolution of inflammation. We can help patients, we can remove inflammatory cells, we can remove uh, this biotic uh, microbe. So, um, I wrote this, um, this study in Frontier in 2018, reassessing the role of antimoeba gingivalis in periodontal disease, and I think don't look no further, just act, use this microscope. And after that, we had this study of uh, Bao and the Journal of Dental Research 2020 saying, um, yes, he was saying antimoeba gingivalis cause oral inflammation and cause tissue destruction. So if we look at this film would be young 30 year old patient stage two. So see how many parasites inside the sulcus, inside the gum. This is absolutely awful. See, this is present in periodontal disease, not telling patient, not showing the patient those parasites, those animal kill larva going everywhere like, like this in the past. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, full of parasite. Uh, I can show you some more uh, um, film of uh, that sort of patient. It's just 30 years old patient having this parasite going like this within the gum, within the gum line, eating red cell, eating nucleus of white cell, and white cell cannot do normal apoptotic apoptosis after that. Uh, white blood cell could not do even uh, met activity after having lost the nucleus. So we see how uh, important this presence of the parasite. See how it's going downside. There's one on the left side. It's full of bacteria, spirochetes, and vibrios. White cell pus and those amoeba in there. How can we? and leave this in the sulcus. How can we not tell the patient? I think it's impossible. We have to do something. We have to remove those parasites from those poor patients. They don't know it's curable removing all this. So very important to treat those patients. So I would say now this is elementary medicine from elementary biology. Just use this microscope, show the patient, tell them what they have, and those patients would ask you to remove all this. So we have this confirmation of a Bowen Sheffer study in the Journal of Dental Research 2020, saying this amoeba cause oral inflammation and tissue destruction. So what I say is nobody has the right to ignore part of science. Dentists cannot ignore this. Periodontists cannot ignore this and not tell the patient. So amoeba has a strong virulence potential and we know those mechanisms of tissue invasion and destruction within the gum. So recommendation of Bowen Sheffer uh, this year and last year is dentists should make sure that inflamed periodontal pocket and tissue are clear of this protozoan. Don't keep this protozoan. Why? Because it has TNF 400 times, interleukin 8, 350 more times. So elimination of the amoeba from the pocket and he says antiparasitic therapy 
might have potential to rest and resolve oral inflammation, improve periodontal healing, and this is what we do for 30 years and more. So stop inflammation, remove those parasites and bad bacteria and patient will uh, be cured. And today we have to remember 2021 patient having periodontal, periodontal disease having COVID-19 complication, patient COVID with periodontal disease have 8.8 more mortality, 8.8 .8 more mortality, hospital admission, 3.5 more hospital admission, and 4.5 needs for assisted ventilation. So we have to cure those patients. Now, Still, I'm writing in journal. I've been uh, sending uh, this uh, paper in 2021 in uh, Information Dentaire in France showing dysbios, uh, oral dysbios and those parasites. Imagine the editor censured our work. They just remove it. They would, they would not want to publish those parasites within the journal. So it is censored. So, this is impossible. This is not possible. Not telling dentists, not telling periodontists, not telling uh, patients. So um, we have to show those parasites eating the nucleus of a white cell. Really, it's aggressive parasite, same as Trichomonas stenax. So that's it. So now this last uh, study in 2021 about genetic origin of periodontal disease. So the answer of this group from um, Japan is uh, clear. It's, it's not genetic. Periodontitis is not genetic origin. And this suggests that oral microbiome, not polymorphous, not genetic, Oral microbiome is the risk factor for periodontal disease and clinicians should pay more attention to microbiome composition or microbiote composition with the microscope because we can see all those bad parasites. So here are some of the uh, writings I've done. I'm doing posters, sending posters uh, in Congress, try to convince some dentists and periodontists. So I, I'll say like um, Samuel Weiss would say, I would say purpural fever at the time of Samuel Weiss, wash your hands, it's as simple as that. In periodontal disease, eliminate parasites, it's as simple as that. So uh, if everyone uh, do his job, uh, dentist responsibility is managing this dysbiose, remove the inflammation, eliminate parasite. This is our role. This is our work we have to do. So thank you very much for this uh, listening. I hope you learn thing. And if you want to do more, you can look at, uh, you can learn this technique on uh, periohil.com. You just write to uh, our office, periohil.com and Will, will be a pleasure to teach you this uh, technique for better patient uh, periodontal 